All right, it's 11.30, so we're going to go ahead and start with the next presentation. Uh, welcome, everybody. We're going to talk about the improvements to the OpenVSP ground school and some of the work that's been done over the last year. So hopefully the audio quality and everything is still working out all right for everyone online. Again, uh, viewers, if you're just joining in, please remember to set your video connection to 1080p using the gear icon in the bottom of your player. And uh, hopefully everyone can hear me. So, uh, the OpenVSP Ground School is intended for improvements in training in OpenVSP. So, OpenVSP is accessible and intuitive to even novice users in basic operation, but it contains an extraordinary depth and subtlety that can take years to master. And there's a consistent demand for a comprehensive multi-format and easily updated tutorial or manual. And the problem is a written document requires more time and effort than is really available from the OpenVSP administrators or the power users. So we determined that an online training program was likely our best option. So we advocated for program development to OpenVSP's leadership and NASA T-Cubed. And in that first chunk of time, we were able to generate a content map and test website pages create basic videos and implement some modifications in the early stages. And we worked with the Langley Site Support Network to find a website format that was responsive, clear, and accessible and robust. So over the last year, content generation and the editing process has gone really well. So there's over 67 tutorial pages created with an introduction and a video and there are over 140 tutorials expected at the present count for Chapter 1 topics alone. And so far, the ground school feedback has been really great, and the community outreach has increased just by moving on to this. So the vision for this program is to have a formalized training program taking users from no prior use through advanced methods and techniques. So the format should be of the form in a chapter subject topic breakdown with an introduction or a lecture on the topic, a demonstration with video, and a procedure. And to reinforce this, we'd like to have exercises after groups of topics or at the end of a subject to reinforce this learning. And a year ago, we had a draft content structure that was laid out about like this, about five different chapters of material that included some of the fundamentals, some design intent, analyses, interaction with other programs, advanced modeling methods, etc. And in just chapter one alone, we had a breakdown like this. So it was pretty extensive and it's grown since then. So there are over 140 topics in chapter one alone at present count and it's likely to grow. Each of these topics has a lecture, a video tutorial, and a procedure with exercises at the end of relevant material. So in short, this is a massive undertaking and it takes a lot of work. So I'm really pleased with how far we've gotten over the last year. But because this is such a large task, the intent is to not repeat work that's already been done or work that belongs at a different resource. So this training program is not intended at all to replace all VSP documentation. It's a how-to manual with explanations of concepts as needed. Much of the wiki content has already been refreshed and reformatted, so there's no need to redo all that from scratch. Justin Grabbit and the folks at ES Arrow have already upted, updated and improved that wiki. If you haven't been there recently, please go check it out. It's got a lot of great documentation for OpenVSP. Some overlap is, of course, expected to provide context or detailed guidance of advanced concepts, but Existing resources like the VSP YouTube channel, which you're all on and watching right now, so thank you. The Google group, the Hangar, all of those are linked directly from the training. So anytime you want to go somewhere and learn something new or get more information, you can go there straight from the video tutorials. As a bit of a layout to some of the features of this website, you'll land on the homepage and from there you can get to anywhere you need very quickly. You also have a post page that has sticky notifications that keep you up to date on current information on the Ground School website and OpenVSP events. And 
you'll see that there's an interactive menu showing your current position in the training. So for example, in this page, we have the creating the wing topic under the basic modeling process subject pulled up and it tells you where you are in the training so that you can easily go back and review things or move to the next topic. We also have links to a contact form to provide feedback or ask questions. And you also have links to all of the example model files. So all of the tutorials that we've built up on this training website are included so that if you want to go and practice one of the concepts, you go straight to that model, open it up, reinforce the learning by doing as instructed on the video, and then you back out and move on to the next one. And a nice feature is that this, this site is entirely searchable by keyword or topic or category, so you can quickly find what you need. So if you want to learn about how to model a wing, you search for wings and it will pull up anything that's categorized, says the word wing, etc. You can find it all and navigate through and find what you want. Another handy feature is that this website is responsive. So it works with monitors and displays or tablets or smartphones and smart devices. And because it's designed to work this way, it uses active commands rather than the long press issue on mobile devices. So instead of having a, a menu where you hover and click on things, you actually have to interact with it in order for it to execute a command. And this is not only useful for mobile devices and mobile menus, but it's also very accessible to folks that might have motor control issues or maybe hearing problems if we need to write things down or the visually impaired. You can only, via the VSP training website is only going to execute a command if you find it and tell it to do so. So it's, it's really accessible, it's really easy to use, and it's very intuitive. So some things that we have coming down the pipe pretty soon in the near term are to fix the subscription service notifications. Some of them work and some email providers are filtering out emails from the website and we're trying to get that chased down so that if you like, you can subscribe to the training material and it will go ahead and send you a notification when new content is added. And we'll be wrapping up all of the chapter one material and the fundamentals. Over the next year, we're going to drastically increase production of the content for chapters two through five, including a heavy focus on analyses and design intent. So expect a lot of things for VSP Aero or structures or getting things ready for CFD and how to set up your model parametrically and how to link things together. We also want to start writing up nice detailed procedures for those of you that don't want to follow along in a video and you prefer to just have it written out and we'll put together practice exercises so you guys can exercise those core topics and reinforce that learning. So what we'll do next is I'm just gonna close out this presentation. We're gonna to go to the website itself and I'm going to demonstrate some of the features for you in real time, show you how the website work, where some of the features are. And after that, we're gonna go straight into a basic modeling tutorial. I'm gonna walk through some of the tips and tricks and some handy things that you can do in VSP. And then after that, we'll be moving on into the next set of presentations. So let me go ahead and close out of this. And I'm going to bring up the web page. So hopefully everyone can see this reasonably well. And I'm going to go ahead and share this screen on the team so that everyone can see what's going on. And so here we are. I'm going to go ahead and jump to the home page and we'll start off from scratch. So here's the home page. You land here on the left hand side here in the desktop view. You've got all the links. You can go straight to the open VSP Twitter account or the Google group. You can search and of course you can go to the contact us page and reach out to us directly. Now the menu will work by dropping down the content and let's say we want to look at the basic modeling process and go to shaping the fuselage. Why not? And what it will do is it's going to take you to that training page and it's going to highlight where you are in the menu. So you can see that here on the left. All of these videos are preset to run in 1080p automatically. So you don't have to go in and adjust your quality unless it's not coming through quick enough and you want to back off to something like 720. But natively, they're going to run in the desktop resolution that they were recorded in. So you don't have to change any of that. 
And if you want to go, you can go to some of these subject or chapter processes. And if you just want to see what's inside, you can go there and all of these have a summary of all of the various topics inside that chapter, as well as a link to all the other subjects in this chapter. So it's really easy to navigate around and see what you can get into. But something else I wanted to demonstrate is that the website is in fact responsive. So if you drag the size of this to something quite small, you can see what it would look like in a mobile view. If you move it around and make it wider, that's what it would look like in a tablet. And here's your desktop view. So this website will respond to the size of the screen that you're looking at in real time, and it will set it up to have the best viewing experience for you. So you can set yourself up, drop the hamburger menu down. And again, it shows you where you are in the training. So I uh, hope that was really useful. Uh, we're really proud of the Ground School website, and we know that it's got a ways to go. We're still working on getting that up and running, but hopefully everybody is able to use that. And uh, what I'm going to do now is get ready to set up for the basic modeling tutorial, but I'm going to pause in case there are any questions, uh, Rob or Justin, if there are some that you see that they need to ask, by all means, let me know on the Teams meeting here, and I'll address that while I'm getting this set up. Brandon, I don't see any immediately on the uh, on the NASA site um, that haven't been answered. Justin, I see that you're on the on the YouTube questions. Are there any questions there you want to bring forward? Uh, I don't think there's anything at the moment. So there have been a lot of questions. It looks like in general about units. So let me talk a little bit more about the use of units in BSP. Um, there's first let me draw some small boundaries vsp proper so sort of the geometry modeling part of vsp it doesn't care what units your model is in so if you, when you type in a span a wingspan of three if in your mind that's three meters three feet three millimeters three inches three miles vsp doesn't care it's whatever you want it to be and if you therefore have that as say three uh, three millimeters, then your area is going to be in millimeters squared. And when VSP calculates the volume, it'll be in millimeters cubed. So VSP itself doesn't care. Now, some of the analysis tools do care. And so in those places, there are spaces in VSP typically where you can specify the units. So for example, if you're doing the finite element modeling, the structures analysis, that Justin Gravitt will talk about on uh, the third day of the workshop in depth. There's a place where you can tell VSP the structures part, what, what models, what units you're using. And that's not only for the length units there, but it's also for the mass and the force units. And what that does is again, VSP for the geometry doesn't care, but when it then writes out a NASTRAN file or a Calculix file, for that finite element analysis, VSP then knows what units to output the material properties in and what units to output to tell Nastran that you're working in, say, inch pound seconds or something like that. And of course, when you're working with inch pound for seconds, then your mass unit needs to be a slinch. And so it will figure that out for you and tell it. Um, likewise, if you're in VSP Aero doing the VSP Aero aerodynamic analysis, almost all of VSP Aero is completely non-dimensional and does not care what you think your units are. So the only things that are dimensional in VSP Aero's input are V infinity, the free stream velocity, and rho. Um, and actually, in many analyses, V infinity and rho are ignored by VSP Aero. So it doesn't even matter what they're set to. You can set them both to one if you'd like. Uh, for the analyses where it does matter, you just have to make them match, again, what you think your model is. So if your model is in meters per second or millimeters, if your model is in meters or millimeters, then you need to set V infinity to meters per second or millimeters per second to match. And you need to set the density rho to whatever matches your model in a consistent set of units. So if it's meters, then you're going to use most likely kilograms for your mass. And so your air density 
would be in kilograms per cubic meter. Uh, the default value of 0 0.202377 is the familiar value of slugs per cubic foot. And I know that anyone who works in metric isn't going to appreciate that, but that's the normal value for working in customary units for air density at sea level. Again, most of the analyses don't actually use that value. So it doesn't matter what it's set to, but all you have to do is put in your preferred value of rho and you'll be good to go. I'm trying to think of some other cases where the mass, where the units come in. Um, again, when you export to CAD, when you export step and IGES files, in one of those, you tell it what the length units are. But again, that's just communicating to the CAD program that's going to import it when it reads in your model, whether it should interpret the units as in millimeters or meters or feet or furlongs or whatever you'd like it to be. So I hope that that clears it up. If there's any more specific questions, I'll try and adjust, address those uh, as, we, as we go. All right, thanks a lot, Rob. Well, I've got the tutorials here